up. She didn't even wash her hands. Ew. Nowadays, we have sanitary public and private bathrooms. We have soap and clean water to wash our hands and our bodies. In the past, Americans weren't so fortunate. People used to wash their hands and bodies, wash their clothes, dump their sewage, and drink in the same water. This caused a lot of sickness. Not washing your hands can help spread terrible viruses. So wash your hands. In the old days, uh, there was no such thing as toilet paper. You used, if you were lucky, uh, leaves or corn husks or whatever. Sometimes you didn't have anything at all, and so you used one hand. Dr. Stephen Tracy is a professor of microbiology at the University of Nebraska Medical Center's Department of Pathology and Microbiology. His labs are full of scientific equipment, glass containers, noisy freezers, and rock. And so commonly what you have now in certain societies in the world, the right hand is used for eating and the left hand is used for other things. And that other thing is, is wiping yourself. If there's no place to do it, you wiped your hands somewhere else. And if you were really lucky, there might be a barrel outside the bathroom where you could wash your hands. Well, of course, if that barrel hasn't been changed regularly, uh, you're washing your hands and whoever has been there before too, and it really hasn't done much for your hands, really takes away the color maybe, but doesn't really take away the smell. Although we live in a cleaner world now, more and more people are getting autoimmune diseases when the body attacks itself. Diseases like asthma, multiple sclerosis, and diabetes. So you have to think, if, if a disease was rare in those days and common now, there must be something that has changed between then and now. And if you assume that we're pretty much the same human beings, you would recognize a Greek person from ancient Greece just as you would us here. Um, there has to be something else, and that's probably environmental, and it could also be gene pools in the human uh, population. Dr. Tracy thinks that viruses have something to do with that change. Uh, my research interests are, are uh, in RNA viruses, specifically enteroviruses, and more specifically than that, the group B Coxsackie viruses, viruses that are uh, common agents of uh, some serious human diseases. Dr. Tracy holds up a colorful knitted spiky ball that represents the Coxsackie virus. This knitted thing represents about, oh, this is maybe about five inches. It's, it's, it's a small, it's larger than a uh, softball, but much, much smaller than a volleyball. Uh, and if this were a real virus, how big would the cell have to be? The cell, uh, the cell would have to be much bigger than this room, probably many, many times this room, uh, more like a large, large auditorium. The virus is so small. How does a little tiny thing like that get around? These viruses are called enteroviruses because they replicate in the gut. And they're usually shed uh, in the stool. So this means that the uh, uh, route of transmission for these viruses is most commonly fecal oral, that is through feces, into the mouth. That sounds kind of gross, and it is. If you uh, missed that, Coxsackie days, is spread from poop to mouth. That sounds gross, but people can be gross, like not washing their hands, especially kids. Germs are on a lot of things. I was thinking before I got sick, that person had a germ, and I have no idea how that germ got into my mouth. Joey just finished kindergarten. At the end of the school year, she got sick with flu-like symptoms. The back of my head was hurting, and then they called my mom, and then once I got home, right before I threw up that second time, I threw up the right when we got home from the from school. Commonly spoken, the Coxsackie viruses and many other enteroviruses that are related to it uh, will induce symptoms that are very similar to the common cold. Not everyone gets off so easy. But if you develop a serious disease, like, for example, infection of the heart, myocarditis, um, then what you can have is pain um, beginning in your, what feels like your stomach. Ch children often complain about tummy aches, real bad tummy aches, and they get a lot of vomiting. Uh, what this is is a bad infection of the pancreas. This then produces a lot of virus that can go to the heart. Dr. Tracy studies Coxsackie B viruses with his wife, Dr. Nora Chapman. We'd always known that our viruses were associated with heart disease, and they'd known this because they actually found the genomes of the virus in um, hearts that were sick. Sue Durfee, a middle school teacher, knows from experience just how dangerous viruses in the heart can be. My heart attack was, uh, I guess, typical in the sense that you didn't realize, I didn't realize what was happening. They knew it was a virus because they did a heart cath. Well, I didn't have any blockage. And it was kind of funny because as I'm laying there when they're doing the heart cath, I'm like, 
but what about these my swollen glands? And so when they realized that there's no blockage, they knew that it had to be a virus that had attacked my heart. Dr. Nori Chapman says, These viruses are the type of virus that you get infected by and then your immune system just gets rid of all the virus, um, antibodies primarily. Even though the virus is gone, Sue still has to worry about the damage to her heart. Dr. Tracy says that the virus really likes the pancreas and the Coxsackie infection can make the body attack the pancreas. It's like your, your immune system becomes a traitor and attacks you instead, instead of attacking the bad guys that come in. And in this case, the autoimmune disease attacks beta cells and these beta cells in the pancreatic islets produce a chemical uh, protein called insulin. And insulin is very important to help you control sugar. And diabetes is when your pancreas stops working. Georgia is 15 years old and has lived with type 1 diabetes since she was 5. It's, it's difficult. I was 5 years old and I had to learn how to, um, like, you go and you want a snack. Well. Some people just go out of the, go into the pantry, take out a bag of chips and start eating them. I had to get out the scale in a bowl and measure out one ounce every time I wanted a snack and then make sure I had to get the right amount of insulin for what I wanted to eat. And it was annoying, but it really helped me learn. Not every person with type 1 diabetes has been infected with Coxsackie virus. For example, Georgia believes her diabetes is genetically linked but all type 1 diabetes patients have similar struggles. Dr. Stephen Tracy hopes his research can lead to a Coxsackie virus vaccine, like the polio vaccine, which could prevent some cases of type 1 diabetes. A, a, a mouse model that we use called a um, non-obese diabetic mouse, or Nod mouse. And the Nod mouse naturally will uh, develop type 1 diabetes. And so we gave these mice, when they're young, virus, just like maybe a baby would be exposed to virus early in, in, in life. Um, and, and to ask, uh, what would this do toward the type 1 diabetes? And what we found in these nod mice, it would protected the nod mice for long term. They did not get diabetes. Ideally, what we would like to be able to show is how um, uh, these viruses are involved in human disease and ultimately find a way to prevent the human disease. Because these viruses are very similar to polio, we know we can vaccinate. Yo, what up? Oh, just putting on my Carmex. Can you get to that? What? What is your problem? What? I don't want your fecal matter on my Carmex. Don't, I don't want that cocksacky virus. What are you talking about? What? Don't you know about the fecal oral transfer of viruses? What is fecal? I don't even know what fecal oral. What are you talking about? You know, poop to mouth. When was the last time you washed your hands? Just before I went to the bathroom. The Coxsackie virus can lead to a large number of problems, including hand, foot, mouth disease, type 1 diabetes, and even heart problems. Always wash your hands. Use, the use of Carmax has not been shown to aid in the transfer of the Coxsackie virus. No animals were harmed in the filming of this production. This is a work of fiction. Any resemblance to actual persons or places is purely coincidental. 